temporomandibular joint. So temporomandibular joint, the mandible, the head of the mandible, this is the head of the mandible, right? So the head of the mandible articulates with the temporal bone. The head of the mandible articulates with the mandibular force of the temporal bone by a pair of joints, by a pair of condylar joints that is called temporomandibular joints. So this is the temporomandibular joint where the head of the mandible. So this is the head of the mandible. So this is the head of the mandible which articulates with the mandibular fossa. So this is the fossa which articulates with the mandibular force of the temporal bone by pair of joints that is called temporomandibular joints. These temporomandibular joints they call they are responsible for bicondylar articulation. These are called bicondylar. This one we call it as bicondylar articulation. So the head of the mandible articulates with the mandibular force of the temporal joint, temporal bone by a pair of joints called temporomandibular joints. By a pair of joints called temporomandibular joints. Okay. So temporomandibular joints the, the articular surfaces coming to the articular surfaces of the temporomandibular joint above above we have articular tubercle here so if you see that on in front of the mandibular fossa so in front of the mandible so this is the mandibular fossa got it so this is the mandibular fossa right this is the mandibular fossa we can see here the green color one I have marked it with green color one. This is the mandibular fossa. In front of the mandibular fossa we have articular tubercle. In front of the mandibular fossa we have articular tubercle. So what are the articular surfaces? What are the structures that are forming the joint? Okay. So articular tubercle which is present in front of the in front of the mandibular fossa we have a tubercle in front of the mandibular fossa that is called articular tubercle and anterior part of mandibular fossa above it the articular surfaces are articular tubercle in front of the mandibular fossa and anterior part of mandibular fossa. Anterior part of mandibular fossa only participates in the formation of temporomandibular joint and the posterior part doesn't involve in the formation. So articular tubercle and anterior part of mandibular fossa, articular, tu articular tubercle and anterior part of mandibular fossa, they they are the articular surfaces above and below. Below it is formed by the head of the mandible. So this is the head of the mandible, right? So this is the head of the mandible. So articular surfaces are above by the articular tubercle here. We have articular tubercle is present here and this is the mandibular forces. Okay, so... So this is the mandibular fossa, uh, this, this is the mandibular fossa and this is the articular tubercle. So the anterior part of mandibular fossa, so this is the mandibular fossa, right? This is the mandibular fossa and articular tubercle will be present here. They form the, they form the articular surfaces above, okay? So they form the articular surfaces above and below it is formed by the head of the mandible. So this is the head of the mandible. The articular surface that below the articular surface it is formed by the head of the mandible. Above it is formed by the articular tubercle and anterior part of articular fossa. These are the articular surfaces that form the joint. That truly form the joint. So above we have articular tubercle and anterior part of mandibular fossa and below we have head of the mandible. The head of the mandible, it measures about 20, mm, 20 mm from side to side and 10 mm from andro-posterior diameter. Okay, it is, the head of the mandible is about 20 mm from side to side and 10 mm. It is more convex anteriorly than compared to posteriorly. So, it is formed by the head of the lower articular surface is formed by the head of the mandible. And the head of the mandible lies in an arc of a circle which, which uh, passes along the anterior margin of foramen maculum. So it is lies in the arc of a circle, the head of the mandible, it lies in the arc of a circle which pass at the anterior margin of foramen magnum. It pass along the anterior, this is a foramen magnum, right? So the head of the, the two heads of the mandible, they lie in the arc of a circle which passes along the anterior margin of foramen magnum. Okay, and next one is the articular surfaces. So the head of the mandible and the mandibular fossa and articular tubercle, they are covered by fibrocartilage. So we know that fibrocartilage covers this temporomandibular joint, the articular surface of tempo, the articular surfaces of head of the mandible and also the mandibular fossa they are covered by the 
fibrocartilage and one more thing is the intraarticular disc so this is the articular disc okay the intraarticular disc which divides the joint into two compartments upper compartment and lower compartment so the intraarticular disc the intraarticular disc which divides the joint into two compartments upper compartment we call it as menisco temporal compartment and lower compartment we call it as menisco mandibular compartment so the articular surfaces are covered by fibrous cartilage and this is nothing but articular surfaces are above our articular tubercle and anterior part of mandibular fossa and below the head of the mandible. So these articular surfaces they are covered by fibrocartilage and the intraarticular disc which is present it divides the joint total joint into two compartments menisco temporal compartment above and menisco mandibular compartment below. Okay and coming to the Ligaments, ligaments which support the joint. Coming to the ligaments which support the joint, one is capsular ligament, capsular ligament, and next one is articular disc, and next one is articular disc, and the third one is lateral temporo. Mandibular ligament, laterally with lateral temporo mandibular ligament, lateral temporo mandibular ligament, and also we have, and also we have spino and stylo mandibular ligaments. Spino and stylo mandibular ligaments. These are the ligaments which are related to the joint. These are the ligaments which are related to the joint. So, first one is capsular ligament and second one is articular disc. Third one is lateral temporomandibular ligament and fourth one is spino and stylomandibular ligaments. Okay. So, these are the ligaments. They support the, they are related to the joint. Not support, they are related to the joint. They may give strength to the joint. So, coming to the capsular ligament, capsular ligament lies the articular tubercle and mandibular fossa and the periphery of the articular surfaces. So, capsular ligament, it lines the articular tubercle, it covers the articular tubercle and the mandibular fossa and periphery of the, the, the capsular ligament lines the articular tubercle, it, it, it is attached to the articular tubercle and also to the mandibular fossa and also it covers the periphery of the upper articular surfaces and below it is attached to the neck of the mandible. So, the capsular ligament, it is covers the articular tubercle and also the mandibular fossa and the periphery of the mandibular fossa and below it is attached. So, this is the capsule, fibrous capsule. Okay, so it covers the articular surfaces above and it is below, it is attached to the neck of the mandible. We know that neck of the mandible is below the head, we have neck of the mandible. Below the head, we have neck of the mandible, right? So, the capsular ligament, the capsular ligament, it is attached to the articular tubercle and the mandibular fossa and the periphery of the mandibular fossa and below it is to attached to the neck of the mandible. So, this is the head of the mandible and the constricted part below the head, we call it as neck of the mandible. So, the mandible below, it is attached to the, the sorry, the capsular ligament below, it is attached to the neck of the mandible here. Okay, so, the capsular ligament, the capsule above the intraarticular disc it is it is loose above the above the intraarticular disc it is loose and below the below, below the disc it is taut so the capsule above the intraarticular so this is the intraarticular disc which is divides the joint into two compartments right so the capsule above the intraarticular disc the capsule above the intraarticular disc it is loose and below the intraarticular disc it is taut so so that's about the fibrous capsule. Though the fibrous capsule or capsular ligament, it is attached to the articular tubercle and also periphery of the, and also it is attached to the mandibular fossa and to the periphery of the mandibular fossa and below it is attached to the neck of the mandible. And above 
the intraarticular disc the capsular ligament it is it is loose and below the intraarticular disc the capsular the capsule the fibrous capsule it is taut and the synovial membrane it lines the inner surface of the fibrous capsule so the synovial membrane it lines the inner surface of the fibrous capsule got it so and one more thing is the fibrous synovial membrane it fails to uh, cover the articular surface it fails to cover the articular surfaces it lines the inner surface of the fibrous capsule so that's about the fibrous capsule so the head the temporomandibular joint the, it is consists of five ligaments so first one is the capsular ligament the capsular ligament it is attached to the it is attached to the articular tubercle here and to the mandibular fossa and to the periphery of the mandibular fossa and also below it is attached to the below it is attached to the neck of the mandible okay and here the so, capsule it is loose above the intraarticular disc and it is taut below the intraarticular discs and one more important thing is here the synovial membrane it lines the inner aspect of the capsule the synovial membrane it lines the inner aspect of the capsule but it fails to cover the articular surfaces as well as the intraarticular disc so synovial membrane it lines the inner aspect of the fibrous capsule but it it uh, fails to cover the articular surfaces as well as the interarticular disc so that's about the fibrous capsule and coming to the other one is it, it is articular discs so the articular disc we know that the articular disc it's a plate of fiber fibrous cartilage the articular disc it is a plate of fibrous cartilage which divides the joint into two compartments okay so which divides the joint into two compartments that is above one we call it as menisco temporal compartment and below one we call it as menisco mandibular compartment so see here, here is the below one and above the one we call it as menisco temporal compartment and below one we call it as menisco mandibular compartment okay the articular disc it is attached to the capsule by it is attached to the capsule it is attached to the periphery of the capsule by thick fibrous bands so the articular disc it is attached to the periphery of the capsule by thick fibrous bands okay so coming to the uh, anterior part of the fibrous capsule the anterior part of the fibrous capsule it consists of uh, anterior extension so the anterior part of the intraarticular disc sorry the anterior part of the intraarticular disc from before backwards from before backwards it consists of anterior extension so this is the anterior extension okay this is the anterior extension and we have one thick band here that is called anterior thick band or we can simply call it as anterior band and we have the intermediate zone we call it as intermediate extension and after that we have a thick band we call it as posterior thick band or we can call it as posterior band okay and after that the intraarticular disc it divides into two it divides into upper lamella and lower lamella okay because venous plexus is present in between the two lamella the venous plexus is present in between the two lamella that's why the intraarticular disc we divides into upper lamella and lower lamella in the posterior aspect okay so the intraarticular disc it divides into upper lamella and lower lamella in the posterior aspect so this is the venous plexus right this is the venous plexus this is the upper lamella and this is the lower lamella so this is the upper lamella and this is the lower lamella okay so the upper lamella it is attached to the squamotympanic fissure the upper lamella it is attached to the squamotympanic fissure and the lower lamella it merges with the fibrous capsule and so lower lamella it is attached to the fibrous capsule and we have squamotympanic fissure fissure is here this is a tympanic plate and this is the squamous part of temporal bone here and this is the squamotympanic fissure this is the middle one we call it as squamotympanic fissure the upper lamella it is attached to the squamotympanic fissure and the lower lamella it is attached to the fibrous capsule so that's about the articular disc so the articular disc it divides the joint into two compartments it is a plate of fibrous cartilage and it divides the joint into two compartments and this is the 
upper one we call it as menisco temporal compartment and lower we call it as menisco mandibular compartment and one more thing is the anti from before backwards the anterior the, the intra articular disc it consists of anterior extension and this is the thick band we call it as anterior thick band and the intermediate extension this is the posterior thick band and this is the bilamellar extension this this one we call it as bilamellar extension because why it is called bilamellar extension means by lamellar extension okay this is the bilamellar extension because of the venous plexus which divide that's divides the articular disc into two lamellae upper lamella is attached to the squamous tympanic fissure and lower lamellae it is attached to the lower lamella it is attached to the periphery of the fibrous capsule and one more important thing is the fibrous capsule it is attached the the fibrous capsule it is attached to the Particular tubercle in front and to the periphery of the mandibular fossa, and it is also attached to the scramotypanic fissure here. So, the fibrous capsule it is attached to the articular tubercle in front and periphery of the mandibular fossa, and it is also attached to the scramotypanic fissure. So, this is the fibrous capsule, right? This is the fibrous capsule. So, this is the fibrous capsule. Which is attached to the articular tubercle here and to the scramotympanic fissure on the back and to the periphery and to the periphery of the mandibular fossa and to the periphery of the mandibular fossa. So that's the attachment of the fibrous capsule and also to the and, and also articular disc discussion is over. It is having to divide the joint into two compartments. Okay, and coming to the Lateral temporomandibular ligament. The third ligament is the lateral temporomandibular ligament. The lateral temporomandibular ligament it strengthens the lateral part of the capsule. It merges with the lateral part of the capsule. So here, see here, when we take the coronal section of the temporomandibular joint, it appears like this. This is the capsule, right? This is the capsule, and he be, and uh, beside the capsule we have one ligament is here which is called lateral temporomandibular ligament so attached to the capsule it merges with the lateral aspect of the capsule it merges with the lateral aspect of the capsule and extends downwards and backwards across the posterior root of zygoma where the zygoma is attached that what we call it as posterior root of zygoma so this is the posterior root of zygoma so the starting here is the posterior, this is the zygomatic arch, right? This is the zygomatic arch and this is the posterior root of zygoma. It passes through the posterior root of zygoma. So the little and it is, so the, this is the capsule. I have represented the two ligaments with green color. Usually we have, we represent the ligaments with green color. So this is the little part of the capsule and this is the, Attached to the lateral part of the capsule, we have lateral ligament of temporomandibular joint, lateral ligament of T and J. Lateral ligament of T and J. Okay, so this is the lateral ligament of TMJ this is the, and this is the temporomandibular joint here is the lateral part of the capsule and this is the lateral ligament of TMJ which supports the lateral aspects of the capsule which supports the lateral aspect of the capsule which strengthens the lateral aspect of the capsule and extends along the lateral aspect of the capsule and it merges at the and it, and it is attached to the posterolateral aspect of the neck of the mandible. It is attached to the posterolateral aspect of the so this is the posterolateral aspect right the mandible is here and this is the head of the mandible and this is the neck of the mandible it is attached to the posterolateral aspect of the neck of the mandible that is the lateral ligament of temporomandibular joint okay and coming to the other ligament that is spino mandibular ligament so spino and stylo mandibular ligaments okay first we will take the spino mandibular ligament spino mandibular ligament when we take the spino mandibular ligament so it extends from the spine of the spinoid here Okay, it extends from the spine of the spinoid. We can see the spine of the spinoid here in the base of the skull. So, we have spine of the spinoid. We have spine of the spinoid here. Here in the, this is the spinoid bone and we have spine of the spinoid here. 
spine of the sphenoid and it extends from the spine of the sphenoid to the lingula of the mandible. So it is attached to the lingula of the mandible. So this is the tongue like projection here on the inner surface of the mandible on the medial surface of the mandible we call it as lingula where through at the mandibular foramen. So lingula is present at the mandibular foramen where the mylohyoid where the Mylohyoid inferior alveolar nerves and vessels they enter into the mild through the mandibular foramen. So, so here is the tongue like projection. Here we call a tongue like projection is present near the mandibular foramen. So, the spinomandibular ligament is extends from the spine of the sphenoid to the tongue lingula of the mandible on the inner aspect of the mandible at the mandibular foramen that is the spinomandibular ligament. And the spinomandibular ligament it is related laterally. It is related laterally to the lateral thyroid muscle here. It is related laterally to the lateral thyroid muscle here and called a tympani nerve. And medially, it is related to the spinomandibular ligament. It is related to lateral thyroid. It is related to lateral thyroid here. See, see, and it is related to the the black pen I have presented. It is the middle meningeal artery. So this is the middle meningeal artery, which is a branch of maxillary artery. So the spinomandibular ligament it is related to the middle meningeal artery and chorda tympani nerve. I have presented the cord, uh, sorry I have presented the auriculotemporal nerve with green color. So this is the auriculotemporal nerve and which uh, the two roots of auriculotemporal nerve which uh, surrounds the middle meningeal artery and we have spinomandibular. This is the spinomandibular ligament uh, which is related laterally to chorda tympani nerve and also pharynx and related medially to the lateral thyroid muscle, middle meningeal artery and also it is related to the corda and it is also related to the auriculotemporal nerve which encloses the middle the two roots of auriculotemporal nerve which encloses the middle meningeal artery okay so that's about the spinomandibular ligament so spinomandibular ligament extends from the spine of the spinoid to the lingual of the mandible which is present at the inner aspect of the mandible and at the mandibular foramen it is related to the corda tympani nerve and also pharynx this is the wall of the pharynx right this is the wall of the pharynx so this is the wall of the pharynx wall of pharynx. This is the wall of pharynx. It is related to corda tympani nerve and wall of pharynx medially and laterally it is related to the lateral thyroid muscle and also maxillary artery nothing but middle meningeal artery and two roots of auriculotemporal nerve. So that is the relations of the spinomandibular ligament and also the other ligament is stylomandibular ligament. Stylomandibular ligament extends from the stylar process to the angle of the mandible. So stylomandibular ligament it extends Stylo mandibular ligament it extends from the stylar process here so this is the stylar process of temporal bone this is the stylar process we can feel it here this is called stylar process it extends from the stylar process to the angle of the mandible so this is the angle of the mandible right it extends from this is the angle of the mandible so it extends from the stylar process to the angle of the mandible that is the uh, that is about the stylo mandibular ligament so coming to the once again capsules of the once again ligaments of the temporomandibular joint the capsular ligament the capsular ligament it is attached to the articular tubercle and also to the squamotympanic fissure behind and it also attached to the periphery of the mandibular fossa and below it is attached to the neck of the mandible so that's about the capsular ligament and one more thing is the capsular ligament it is loose above the intraarticular disc and it is taut below the below the intraarticular below the intraarticular disc it is taut and above the intraarticular disc it is loose okay and coming to the Next one that is called as intraarticular disc. The intraarticular disc is nothing but in the, it, uh, it is nothing but the degenerative primitive insertion of the lateral pterygoid muscle. So the it, the intraarticular disc it from before backwards it is having anterior extension, anterior thick band, intermediate zone, and posterior thick band, and posteriorly the intraarticular disc divides into two lamella, and these lamella. Upper lamella is attached to the squamotympanic fissure and lower lamella it is attached to the 
periphery of the fibrous capsule. The intraarticular disc it is attached to the periphery of the fibrous capsule by thick bands. Okay, so below the two lamella we have venous plexus is present. Below the thick lamella we have below the thick lamella we have two venous plexus is present. That's why we call it as this one injury we call it as bilamellar extension. Bilaminar bilamellar extension. So the intraarticular disc consists of anterior extension anterior thick band, intermediate zone, posterior thick band and bilamellar extension and the interarticular disc it is attached to the periphery of the fibrous capsule and this intraarticular disc which divides the joint into upper compartment and lower compartment above is the menisco temporal compartment and below is the menisco mandibular temp temp compartment. And one more thing is the intraarticular disc represents the degenerative primitive insertion of lateral tergoid muscle. Okay, and coming to the another ligament that is lateral temporal mandibular ligament. This lateral temporal mandibular ligament which merges with the lateral aspect of the fibrous capsule and it supports the lateral aspect of the fibrous capsule and is attached to and pass it runs downwards, backwards along the posterior root of zygoma and it is inserted to the Postural lateral aspect of the neck of the mandible. It strengthens the lateral aspect of the mandible. And next one is spinomandibular ligament. Spinomandibular ligament. Spinomandibular ligament, it extends from the spine of the spinoid to the lingula of the mandible near the mandibular foramen. It is related laterally, it is related uh, medially to chorda tympani nerve and also wall of the pharynx and it is related laterally to lateral pterygoid muscle, maxillary artery, nothing but this is the middle meningeal artery and which are auricular temporal nerve which encloses the root, which, which is having two roots. So these two roots enclose the middle meningeal artery and Stylomandibular ligament which extends from the styloid process to the angle of the mandible. This stylomandibular ligament which separates the parotid gland from the submandibular gland. So these are the ligaments related to the temporomandibular joint. And coming to the blood supply of the temporomandibular joint, here we have superficial temporal arteries and maxillary arteries, which are the branches of the which are the terminal branches of the external carotid artery. These two branches superficial temporal artery and maxillary artery they supply the temporomandibular joint here and also now supply by the auricular temporal nerve which is a branch from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve and also masseteric nerve which is a so now supplied by two auricular temporal and masseteric Masseteric nerve. Okay, auricular temporal nerve is a branch from the posterior division of mandibular nerve, and masseteric nerve is a branch from the anterior division of the mandibular nerve. And coming to the relations of the joint, the joint it is related in front. So the temporomandibular joint in front it is related to lateral pterygoid muscle. We know that the lateral pterygoid muscle it is inserted to the pterygoid fovea which is at the uh, depression at the head of the mandible. So the lateral pterygoid muscle it is inserted here. The lateral pterygoid muscle it is inserted here. This is nothing but pterygoid fovea and the, and also it is related to the temporalis muscle. We know that temporalis muscle it is related to the coronoid process of mandible. This is the coronoid process of mandible and this is the condylar process of the mandible which is nothing but the head of the mandible. So the temporomandibular joint in front it is related to lateral pterygoid muscle and also temporalis muscle and also it is related to, related to masseteric nerves and vessels. It is related to masseteric nerves and vessels. And coming to the behind relations, in front relations are three. Okay, in front it is related to, in front it is related to lateral pterygoid muscle. Here, here we have lateral pterygoid muscle gets inserted at the pterygoid fovea, lateral pterygoid muscle and temporalis muscle and masseteric and masseteric nerves and vessels. Masseteric nerves and vessels, they are the inferent relations of the temporomandibular joint. Okay, now coming to the behind relations of the temporomandibular joint, we have parotid gland is there behind the temporomandibular joint. Behind the 
temporomandibular joint we have parotid gland is present behind the temporomandibular joint and also we have super tempor superficial temporal vessels are present and also auricular temporal nerve auricular temporal nerve and superficial temporal vessels we know that they emerge from the apex of the parotid gland superficial temporal vessels and also auricular temporal nerve they emerge from the apex of the parotid gland they come on the posterior relations of the temporomandibular joint okay so the posterior relations are parotid gland superficial temporal arteries masseter superficial temporal arteries auricular temporal nerve and also external acoustic meatus external acoustic meatus this is the external acoustic meatus right so the external acoustic meatus also forms the posterior relations of the temporomandibular joint okay and next coming to the a uh, later relation it is related to skin superficial fascia here this later it is subcutaneous uh, related to skin superficial fascia here and coming to the deep relation deep relation it is related to from from outside inwards from outside inwards it is related to lateral telcoid muscle from outside in these are the medial relations from here to here are the medial relations this is the outside one and this is the inner side one from outside to inwards it is related to lateral telcoid muscle here lateral telcoid muscle okay and then middle meningeal artery and also the two roots of auricular temporal nerve the green one we have represented with the, the red one is middle meningeal artery so this is the middle meningeal artery so i have represented this one as the middle meningeal artery and the middle meningeal artery it is enclosed by two roots of auricular temporal nerve here these are the two roots of auricular temporal nerve and we have spino mandibular ligament which is a derivative from the meckel's cartilage right this is a derivative of the uh, meckel's cartilage and also we have corda tympani nerve here corda tympani nerve this is the corda tympani nerve and also posterior wall of the pharynx these are the this wall of the pharynx and these are the relations of the medial relations of the temporomandibular joint from outside inwards we have lateral telcoid muscle medial meningeal artery which is enclosed by roots of auricular temporal nerve spino mandibular ligament corda tympani nerve and this is the wall of the pharynx these are the medial relations above it is it is related to the floor of the middle cranial fossa above it is related to the floor of the middle cranial fossa those are the these are the relations of the temporomandibular joint so anteriorly it is related to pterygoid muscle lateral pterygoid muscle here is insertion right this is the lateral pterygoid muscle here is insert to the pterygoid fovea here to the head of the mandible and temporalis and also we have masseteric nerves and vessels that come along the mandibular notch here masseteric nerves and vessels so it is also masseteric related to later the uh, inferred relations of the temporomandibular joint masseteric nerves and vessels are also come and behind we have parotid gland here the superficial temporal vessel which am, and auricular temporal nerve which emerge from the apex of the parotid gland also we have external acoustic meatus here which can have external acoustic meatus which also forms the posterior relation of the temporomandibular joint and coming to the lateral relations we it is related it is related to skin and subcutaneous it is superficial and it is subcutaneous okay and coming to the medial relations from outside inwards we have lateral telcoid muscle middle meningeal artery auricular temporal nerve spino mandibular ligament corda tympani nerve and wall of the pharynx they form the medial relations of the temporomandibular joint and the and nerve supplied by auricular temporal nerve and masseteric nerve and blood supplied by the terminal branches of the external carotid artery nothing but the superficial temporal and maxillary artery so that's about the relations at uh, that's about the relations of the temporomandibular joint okay and coming to the movements so coming to the movements of the temporomandibular joint usually the movements are divided into two the movements which takes place in the menisco temporal compartments this is the menisco temporal compartment and the movements which takes place in the menisco mandibular compartment menisco mandibular compartment okay we know that the articular disc it divides the articular disc divides the joint cavity into two menisco temporal and menisco mandibular compartment four movements takes place at the temporomandibular totally four movements takes place at the 
temporomandibular joint. Okay, one is protraction, protraction of mandible. And next one is detraction of mandible. And third one is depression, depression of mandible. And fourth one is elevation of mandible. So, depression of mandible means open mouth. And elevation of mandible means, elevation of mandible means closed mouth. Okay, so the fourthly protraction means protraction of chin, protraction of chin and retraction means retraction of chin and depression means, depression means open mouth, open mouth, depression. So that the mandible depresses here by opening the mouth, depression. Okay, depression and elevation means closed mouth. Closed mouth is the elevation. Got it? So, the movements are divided into two. This is the menisco mandibular co temporal compartment and the menisco mandibular compartment. Usually in protraction, usually in protraction what happens means the articular disc moves forwards, glides forward. This is the articular disc, right? So, this is the in articular disc. This is the in articular disc. This articular disc. So, this is the articular disc. This articular disc glides forwards this uh, along the head of the mandible. So in protraction what happens is this joint takes place. This movement takes place in the menisco temporal compartment. So in the protraction of mandible that is protrudes the mandible. Protraction of chin. Okay. This, in the protraction of mandible what happens is the articular discs glides forwards along with the head of the mandible. This movement, this protraction takes place in the menisco temporal compartment. The articular disc glides forwards along with the head of the mandible. Okay. And similarly in the detraction of the mandible, detraction of the chin, detraction of the mandible, what happens here is the articular disc glides ba backwards, the articular disc glides backwards along with the head of the mandible. So the protraction and detraction, the protraction and detraction takes place at the menisco temporal compartment. So the protraction means it, it nothing but protraction of protrudes the chin. Protraction means protrudes the chin. So, the in protraction of mandible, what happens is the articular disc, this is the article glides forward along with the head of the mandible and in retraction, the articular disc glides forward taking along with the, taking with the head of the mandible. So, these are the protraction and retraction. And coming to the depression and elevation. The depression and elevation takes place in the menisco mandibular compartment. So, the depression and elevation takes place in the depression means open mouth. Depression means we are, while opening the mouth, we are depressing the mandible, right? So, depression means open mouth and elevation is closed mouth. So, the depression and elevation takes place at the menisco mandibular compartment. So, so the a transverse axis, so the menisco mandibular compartment, it allows the rotation along two independent axes. So the depression and elevation which takes place along the transverse axis. Transverse axis, so the menisco mandibular compartment, the menisco mandibular compartment, this is the menisco mandibular compartment, right? The menisco mandibular compartment, it allows rotation along two independent axes. The menisco mandibular compartment, it allows rotation, rotation along two independent two independent axes. One is transverse axis, transverse axis for depression and elevation of the mandible. One is transverse axis for hinge movements for depression and elevation of the mandible. And next one is vertical axis, vertical axis for side to side movements of the mandible. So the menisco mandibular compartment, it rotates the mandible with along with the two independent axes. With the two independent axes, one is transverse axis for for hinge movements for depression and elevation of the mandible and next one is vertical axis for side to side movements of the mandible. That's about the menisco mandibular compartment and menisco temporal compartment it allows the gliding of the mandible, it allows the gliding of the head of the mandible along with the articular disc in protraction and retraction.
and one more thing is the both compartments they are involved in chewing and side to side movements of the mandible so the both compartments they are involved in chewing and side to side movements of the com movements of the mandible and also these two compartments are involved in extreme elevation and extreme depression of the mandible okay so the menisco mandibular compartment it allows the protraction and retraction of the mandible and the menisco mandibular compartment it allows the depression of the mandible as well as the elevation of the mandible and the, both the compartments they allow they involve in the side to side chewing movements of the chewing movements as well as side to side movements of the mandible what happens here in elevation so what happened here is side to side movements of the mandible so if we take the right side so what happens when we take the right side what happens in side to side movements first we take the right side in chewing movements the head of the mandible it glides forwards as in protraction in the head of the mandible it glides forward as in protraction and the left side the left head of the mandible the left head of the mandible it merely rotates so what happens it merely rotates it merely rotates so what happens here is chewing movements takes place first the head of the mandible it, it uh, glides forwards as in protraction it glides forward as in protraction and here the head head of the left side the head of the left side it it merely rotates so side to side chewing movements occur simultaneously if the head if the left side head of the mandible glides forwards and the right side head of the mandible it merely rotates so the chewing movements takes place simultaneously so that's about the movements of the mandible protraction retraction depression and elevation protraction and retraction take place in the menisco temporal uh, compartment and Depression and elevation, they takes place in the menisco mandibular compartment. They, it along the transverse axis because depression and elevation, they, they uh, takes place along the independent axis. That is nothing but transverse axis which provides hinge movements for depression and elevation. And coming to the, and also the menisco mandibular compartment also provides vertical axis. It also provides vertical axis for side to side movements of the mandible. Okay, and next what are the muscles that move, cause the what are the muscles that produce movements of the mandible so the muscles of mastication we know that the muscles of mastication are the masseter medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid and temporalis these muscles they are involved in the protraction retraction depression elevation as well as side to side movements of the mandible as well as side to side movements of the mandible okay so what are the muscles that causes the elevation of the mandible so what are the muscles that causes the elevation of the mandible i have elevation means this one i have represented the arrow upwards so what are the muscles that cause the elevation? temporalis muscle that causes the elevation of the mandible and also medial pterygoid muscle it also causes elevation of the mandible and also fibers of the superficial fibers of the masseter superficial fibers superficial fibers of the masseter they also cause the elevation of the mandible so what are the muscles that forms the elevation means elevation it is carried out by temporalis here medial pterygoid is here we know that medial pterygoid is inserted to the angle of the mandible so this is medial pterygoid muscle here medial pterygoid medial pterygoid muscle as well as the superficial fibers of the masseter masseter is inserted to the ramus of the mandible right so the superficial fibers of the masseter they inserted below right so superficial fibers of the masseter masseter they causes the elevation of the mandible they causes the elevation elevation of the mandible means this here this is this is the elevation of the mandible open mouth means elevation right open uh, elevation uh, closed mouth means elevation sorry closed mouth means elevation okay i'm coming to the what are the muscles that causes the depression of the mandible so the depression of the mandible it is carried out by the lateral pterygoid muscle here the depression of the mandible it is carried out by the lateral pterygoid and also the suprahyoid muscles lateral pterygoid and also the suprahyoid muscle that is genohyoid, mylohyoid and digastric muscles they also involved in the depression here while muscles of mastication is later telephone and also genohyoid, mylohyoid and posterior belly of digastric posterior belly of digastric they cause the depression of the mandible okay so i have represented the depression of mandible like with downward arrow mark with i have represented the 
this one the depression of the mandible with downward aroma and coming to the protraction of the mandible protraction of the mandible i have presented with this one protraction right so the protraction of the mandible it is carried out by the protraction of the mandible it is carried out by lateral pterygoid and also medial pterygoid medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid they cause the protraction of the mandible it protrudes the chin okay lateral pterygoid medial pterygoid and also and also the superficial fibers the superficial fibers of the masseter the superficial fibers of the masseter also they cause the protraction of the mandible so protraction here elevation is over and this is the depression is over okay and coming to the protraction protraction of the mandible it is carried out by what are the fibers carried in the protraction of the mandible here medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid and also we are having superficial fibers of the masseter and also masseter masseter also involved masseter also involved in the protraction of the mandible okay and coming to the retraction of the mandible Detraction of the mandible, it is carried out by what are the fibers that is causing the detraction of the mandible means deep vertical fibers of the masseter and posterior fibers of the temporalis. So, two muscles are involved here, masseter and temporalis. Masseter, I have presented retraction with like this, right. Protraction is like this. Protraction is like this. Retraction is like this. Okay. Elevation is like this. This is the elevation and the depression is like this. Okay, so retraction is carried out by masseter and temporalis. All these are nothing but muscles of mastication and side to side chewing movements. Side to side chewing movements, I have represented the arrow with both sides. Side to side chewing movements, it is carried out by medial and lateral pterygoids. Medial and lateral pterygoids. They cause side to side chewing movements. Medial and lateral pterygoids, they cause side to side chewing movements. Okay, medial and lateral pterygoid. So, that's about the muscles which produce movements of the mandible. So, protraction is, elevation is carried out by temporalis, medial pterygoid and medial uh, masseter and depression is carried out by lateral pterygoid and also suprahyoid muscles and coming to the protraction it is carried out by medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid and also masseter and retraction it is carried out by masseter and temporalis backward arrow and side to side chewing movement side to side chewing movement it is carried out by side to side chewing medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid that's about the movements of the mandible and these are the muscles of mastication that are those are the causes the movements of the mandible that's about the temporomandibular joint